Lord Jesus, you have full reign in this place. Well, Holy Spirit, we give you express permission to come through this place in a mighty way. Touch our hearts, touch our lives. Sweep across this place, Holy Spirit. Let us know your presence and your power. We love you. We worship you in spirit and in truth. God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, this next hour belongs to you. We bless you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen and amen. amen. Let's sing that first song, don't we? In the red back book, we're doing 329. Standing red on back. the promises. Standing on the promises. Right.
several songs in a row. Let's take a break and let's do some praying and some praising. Let's hear what God is doing in His church today. I'll start off by saying that we had a wonderful time at the Special Cold Conference yesterday. I won't go into a lot of the details simply because uh, we're on the internet and we'll have some meetings later on about the particulars, but there was a wonderful spirit there. Wasn't there, Jan? Oh, yes. Jan joined me yesterday. We had a we had a great time. Yes, I tell you what, now that lady right there, she's a pistol, isn't she? <laughs> I knew she was, but when I got to spend all day with her, we laughed and we cut up and we got some serious. We cried, and we prayed, and we we got some business done. The Lord did some business yesterday. Good morning, Neos. Good morning, Sorry. Ginger. Good to see you guys this morning. But yesterday was a a very very special day for the United Methodist Church, the North Georgia Conference. And I feel like there was a great spirit there on everybody's part. Everybody was gracious, kind, and loving. And we parted ways in a very godly fashion. And I feel that like God's will was served and the Holy Spirit was present. So wonderful. I came home feeling exhilarated about it, actually. A little bit sad, because any time you have a parting of the ways, it can be a little bit sad. But we know God has great things for us and God has great things for this church. Amen? Amen. I have never been more exhilarated about that. And uh, God is going to reveal some things to us, I believe, starting very soon. We're going to follow Him step by step. He'll lead us. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, y'all tell me what's going on in your lives. I'm going to call him Tony. Hey! I know Tony's got something. <laughs> Did y'all see it on Facebook? Okay, the little booger. She's, she has stayed in my arms for an hour and a half just right after she was born. So, amen. That was just wonderful. Her name is. Her name is. Got a long river. 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 There we go. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you better remember. Gable. River Lee by Ola Gable. Okay. Oh, yeah. so that's, that's beautiful. That's, yeah. That. So I think it's going to put the, going to put those two words together, Riverly. Riverly, yeah. Oh. Amen. So anyway, when she was stayed in my arms there this, until the nurse came and got her, and then she wanted to stay with Papa. And yeah. She just said no. <laughs> <laughs> but it was just wonderful. Seven pounds, eleven ounces. That is wonderful. Well, Praise Daddy. God. I mean, everybody was well. The other siblings weren't there, but yeah. Mom and dad was there uh, the whole time, so it was Praise great. I mean, they were right there. Everything went good. Doctors were great. Nurses were great. We appreciate all those at uh, as Habersham, uh, Habersham Hospital. Yeah. It's over there. So appreciate all the help they did. And it was just great. The nurses were just right on top. It was 
You heard that song a while ago. I was looking at you. You thought I was telling you to play something different, but I said, how sweet to hold a newborn baby. That's when I pointed at you because oh. I said, that's Tony. Yeah, yeah, that's Tony was. this week holding that new grandbaby. Number six. Number six. You're getting old, brother. I know. <laughs> God bless you. Grandchildren are just the best, aren't they? We've been spending a lot of time with Charlotte the past couple of, of weeks, um, which I'm going to let Angie just tell you a prayer request from Severin Coggins. So Thomas's mother got a severe kidney infection um, that has gotten into her bloodstream as well. Oh, wow. So um, she's been in the hospital all week last week. Um, she was dismissed. Lord, I'm getting my days confused. Friday uh, to be sent to um, rehab for a while at one of the nursing homes. And <clears throat> the one that was chosen, I think, anyway... They wound up over at a nursing home that was not fit for a person to be in. So that was very distressful because Thomas had to leave his mother there for the night, uh, Friday night. And Stacia got on the horn yesterday and started calling people and um, called her uh, old boss when she used to work at Athens Community Council on Aging. And this lady now works for a lawyer that they work on advocating for elderly people that are not, you know, and so she advised her what all to do. And long story short, they got his mama out of that center uh, and got her the hospital to agree to give her her IV antibiotics that she's supposed to be having. The other big thing was once they got her over to the, to the place she was at, they didn't, they told them they couldn't give her the IV antibiotics because they didn't have nobody on staff qualified to do it. And that was the whole reason why she was sent there. More than a nurse. So, um, but yesterday, Stacia was like, we were all praying, and she wrote me, and she said, Mama, the Lord is helping us. And they got the hospital degree for him to bring her in and then do her IV antibiotic infusions and then them take her back home at the ER. So she had to go back again this morning for another one, and we'll probably have to go back tomorrow morning. And then, because of it being the weekend, they couldn't get nothing set in stone yet, but they're working on getting a home health care agency that will come out to the house and do it for her. But she's not in a situation where she really can be left alone right now. She's so weak, so very weak, which was why she went to a center, but that was didn't work out good. So anyhow, just keep them in your prayers. Um, she's really down emotionally and physically, and I'm just kind of in a, a very little state of, no, of kind of a lack of response to things right now because she's just been hit with so much. Um, Thomas's sister's pregnant with her fourth child, and, and sick right now with asthmatic issues, so she's physically not capable of doing a lot either. So Thomas and Stacia are trying to do it all. So we've had the joy and the blessing of having a two-year-old around the house Yay. quite a bit this week. <laughs> and um, Yay. my old bones are even older than I thought they were. <laughs> but I'm here, bless us, this morning. So um, just keep us all in your prayers. Amen. Amen. Particularly Evelyn. Thank you all so much. Who else has a prayer request praise report this morning? It's Linda? Well, my great niece, um, baby was due December the 25th, mm -hmm. but decided to get here yesterday. Ooh. Um, and when they got to the hospital, he was like Jack Knight. It was Ooh. head and his feet. My goodness. Or at the bottom. Um, and they were both getting pretty stressed out. Mm -hmm. So they decided that they were going to do a C-section, but they didn't have an upper room operating room available. Mm. So she had a, a, a doula and I don't I know what happened to that baby. God put his hands on that baby and turned it. But he came out, he weighs five pounds and three ounces. Wow. And his name is Asher. Don't know his middle name. Asher. Asher. Thank God for Asher. Absolutely. And um, we're not getting a I'm getting my information Third down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they're, they're kind of funny about giving out information. They're being very private. But he's, as far as I know, he's doing okay. You put that out the prayer chain yesterday, didn't you? <clears throat> Angie did for me. Because yes. Angie told me when I came home, I said, I didn't see it because we were all wrapped up in that yeah. stuff. And I, Angie said, Glenda's uh, niece or nephew has, has been born and it, it, the baby just turned around. He did. Just turned around. He absolutely did. <laughs> yeah. What prayer does, God is intervening. Babies don't usually do that, do they? I've never, I'm just all of a sudden, I think I'm going to go this way instead of that way. Well, he had he been flip flopping. Okay. While. They usually get still, but he'd been flip flopping. But God said, he is flip a month this way. early. 
<laughs> so, but yes, God touched that, touched little Asher. And Amen. Did, Praise God. Flow right. <laughs> God is so faithful. Who else has a prayer request? Praise for you. Yes, I'm another, sorry to mean to cut you off. A, a, a mutual friend of ours, Dennis Cook, yeah. put out on Facebook that he needed all his prayer warriors to pray because he has a physical need, and I don't know what that was, but I told him I was praying for the master healer to, to touch every part of his body. Man, well, he claimed it. We sure will. Thank you for bringing that to us. Who else? Dan. And then I heard somebody up here. After that. Um, I've got a friend, a neighbor, who had breast cancer, and now they found another mass. Mm. And I asked her, was it okay to offer it up to for prayer, and she said, All the prayers are please. <laughs> and her son texted her yesterday, and her son in law just had a stroke. Oh my, and I know he's got to be pretty young oh because they just had a baby. <laughs> Too long back, so. Prayers for both of them. And the lady, you, can we have her first name? Donna, Donna, and it's this cancer mass. They're not sure what it is yet, but it's just another mass, just a mass after having cancer. So. Let's ask God for that. Lord, amen. Who was over here? Miss Miss Gloria. Yeah, uh, Bobby Coker. He used to be a member of this church, and his family was deep uh, work in here. And he passed away Friday night. Bobby he Coker. For, yeah. Okay. He asked prayers for his family. He had three children and numerous grandchildren. I, I think he I'm pretty sure I talked to him. I think he called me on the phone one day. Is he the one who brought that plate here that day? Were we all here? There's a man who found one of the commemorative plates and some stuff, and he brought it to us. I think that was him. Coker. Yes, Mr. Bob. Uh, he was the one that was uh, did the singing in our fellowship hall. He had a company, and he did it for Yeah. Uh, for that was him. That was him, because that, that, that I remember now. Yeah. Bless his heart. Bless his family. Lord, God, 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 God. Keep him in perfect peace. Hospital since July. Oh my. Yeah, very He's a friend of this church, and they were so sweet when they came that day and talked about their, their past in the church. I think they live over wider maybe by now, or somewhere maybe down on down yeah. toward uh, toward uh, seventy eight. When they can. Uh, or something. Bobby yeah. Coker, Bobby Coker's family. We're pregnant today. Good news. Did you? Um, this is three weeks in a row. Whenever I have opened up the paper and seen the. Oh my. And um, the other two were 85, but this young man was 67. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't seen him in a while. But he used to, his wife grew up with my ex husband mm -hmm. and um, her brothers. And uh, my ex husband played together. Mm -hmm. He was growing up over in Forest Heights in Athens. And uh, so they were real close at one time. And uh, I don't know that all I know is that he had some form of cancer. Okay. Do you have a first name for him? Well, we all call him Yogi. Yogi. Yogi's family. Mm -hmm. Yogi Collins. Yogi Collins. The Lord knows him and he knows she he knows the family. Mm -hmm. He's he was a nice guy. Good. Real sweet. Thank you for letting us know. We'll be glad to pray for them this morning. Miss Willene, how are you doing? You got any prayer requests for us or praise reports? I'm I'm to the point now so I'm forgetting things. Uh huh. Pray to that. Won't leave me. I will. I sure will. The Lord doesn't forget, though, does He? No. He knows your name. He knows all about you. And he knows the cares of your heart. And He's always there with you. Every step of the way. Amen? Amen. 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 He'll bring those things to your mind. Let's believe that with her in Jesus' name. We all get forgetful at times, but the Lord can help us with our mind, our body, our soul, our spirit, every part of our being. Let's pray for her right now in Jesus' name. Y'all stretch your hands out here. <laughs> Angie, would you grab... Would you want to come down here? Let's just lay hands on this morning. I think we need to do that. Where's my anointing oil? Here it is. I want an order oil. And let's pray the prayer of faith over her right now in Jesus' name. Miss Willene, you are such a part of this church, and we, we we feel like you're here with us every Sunday, but when you're here, it's a special privilege. Special privilege. May I anoint you in the power of the Holy Spirit? I anoint you now in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Miss Willene. Be touched by Jesus right now as we pray in Jesus' name. Dear God, we just lift Sister Willene up before you, O oh Lord, and yes. we ask that you touch her body, touch her mind, touch her spirit. 
Lord Jesus, oh, yes. I pray that her former days would be even greater than the latter, oh, Lord God. Hallelujah. And I pray in the name of Jesus that she would feel your strength and your power and your mighty hand upon her, Lord God. I pray that as she goes forth each and every day that she would be built up in strength and joy. And, oh, Lord God, I just pray that the desires of her heart will be met within her, Lord Jesus. I thank you for the life that she's lived, Lord God, and the example of Christ that she's been to her family and to those around her, Lord Jesus. Jesus. And I pray that she would, Lord, be encouraged and that she would feel strong. And we give you praise, Lord, Lord. in the name of Jesus. Clear memory, Lord. Clear memory in Jesus' name. We believe it. We claim Amen. it. Clear memory. Thank you, Jesus. Touch your mind. Touch your heart. Touch your spirit, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord, we lift up our other prayer requests today, God. We continue in a spirit of prayer as we bring requests before the throne of the Jesus. For me, our requested prayer for grieving families, Lord. You are very present help in the time of trouble, Lord. And we don't know where these families all stand and various people and families, but Lord, throughout all of our grief, Lord, what a wonderful time it is that you could draw us very close to you, Lord. I lift up uh, Bobby Coker's family. God, he was a friend of this church, God. Had deep roots here, Lord. He built, helped build the fellowship hall for free, Lord. Oh, God, I know he's in your presence right now. He loved you with all of his heart. Lord, I pray you just touch his grieving family right now, Lord. It's so hard to give someone up, no matter how old they are. Lord, no matter how long they've been sick, it's still so very difficult. But God, Bobby Coker's family right now, oh, Holy Spirit, I pray you'd be with them. pray you touch them. Lord, for Ginger's friend, Yogi Collins, who's passed away, Lord, I pray that you would touch his family, God. And wherever they stand, draw them very, very near, very, very close today, Lord, in Jesus' name. Um, Asher, Lord, you told that baby to turn around, and he did. God, thank you for the power of prayer. Thank you that even that... Small baby still in his mother's womb obeys the voice of the Holy Spirit and was delivered naturally and uh, promptly, Lord Jesus, and he's healthy, God. I pray that that child would grow up in the anointing. I pray that his parents would take him to church, that they would teach him the ways of Jesus, Lord, that he would grow up a living testimony to your grace and your mercy, to the power of prayer. Lord, for Jan's neighbor, her son-in-law's had a stroke, Lord, and I pray, God, in Jesus' name, you touch that situation. You know what's going on, Lord. Draw their hearts, most of all, first of all, to you. Lord, talk to their hearts, speak to their heart. And Lord, I pray for healing to intervene as, as Lord, as they seek to serve you, as they seek to bow their knee to you, Lord. Lord, for Donna, a mass has returned, Lord. She's dealt with cancer once before, God, and you've delivered her from it. God, I pray in Jesus' name that you would touch the hands of the doctors, that this mass would be benign. If it needs to be removed, it would leave her body, Lord, in Jesus' name, and that she would give you all glory and praise. In the name of Jesus, Lord, I want to thank you for this new grandchild that Papa P has, Lord. Number six, Lord, I speak blessings, peace, grace, and mercy over that family. Lord, may they raise that child in the love and the admonition of the Lord. And God, Papa P, what a great witness from a grandfather who loves you with all of his heart and all of his soul. Lord, I pray that he would have great influence in her life, that you would have great influence in her life through Papa and through her grandma and through all this family, God, this family that surrounds her in love. Thank you. Lord, I think of Annie Craig. They're uh, camping this weekend. God, I pray that you would touch them, bless them, and keep them. And for our prayer request, Lord, uh, Craig's sister, Kate, last we heard, Lord, was still struggling with the rehabilitative process from surgery. And God, I pray that you would continue to touch her. And for Jack, was having his cochlear implants turned on, Lord. I pray that by now he is already experiencing the sensations of hearing, Lord, that his brain is adapting to this wonderful technology that you have provided. God, I pray you touch him in Jesus' name. Restore his hearing, restore his quality of life, I pray. Lord, for my dear friend Linda Aaron at, uh, over at Carabella, God, oh, she's having some health struggles, Lord, but she loves you with all of her heart. She's with us every Sunday morning. I pray blessings of peace and grace and mercy upon her life and healing. Lord, may the health problems that we have shared about, Lord, may they uh, go in Jesus' name, that full healing would be restored, her mobility would be restored, and God, that you would touch her right now in Jesus' name, where she's a very special lady. Lord, for Roxanna Holiday, I'm thinking of her, Lord. She doesn't get to come to church much, but Lord, she joins us every week. But Roxanna has physical issues going on, but Lord, I know she loves you. You're a very present help in the time of trouble. Lord, touch Roxanna right now in Jesus' name, I pray. Lord, our brother Chet, we don't see him much, God, because he's working, making a living, Lord, but he loves his church, Lord. He's with us every week. Oh, I lift up Chester Holiday, Lord. I love that man. He is a rock-solid man of God in our church, Lord, and I lift him up today, God. I pray that you would just give him peace and give him hope and give him grace and mercy right now, Lord Jesus, and health 
and vitality. Lord, I pray that you would be health to his bones. Lord, I bless him in Jesus' name, Lord, for our church in the future, Lord. We had some interesting times yesterday, Lord, some beautiful, wonderful times. The Holy Spirit was very, very present at that conference. Lord, I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for the graciousness. I want to thank you for the leaders of the United Methodist Church that we have worked with and served with for so long, Lord, for this church's uh, last 50 years or so, Lord, has been a part of the United Methodist Church. Lord, I thank you for that. And God, I thank you for the legacy. And I thank you for the future, Lord, that now that we're going to be going in a different direction, Lord, bless those folks that we love so much. But Lord, I love the future and I love what you have for us, God. It's beginning to flow. It's beginning to come. Lord, would you make it plain to us, Lord? We still have several hurdles to cover before we are fully free and uh, to able to pursue the path that you put on our heart. But Lord, I believe that you'll give us grace and mercy and favor with men, Lord, favor with officials, Lord, that we would uh, see the will of God be manifest in our midst over the next month, Lord, as we assemble our things together. Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We praise you. And I want to go ahead and thank you for the offering, Lord, we're about to take. You are so good to your church, Lord. You are so good to give us all of our needs, all of our needs are met according to your riches and glory in Christ Jesus. You never fail us. You have no lack, Lord Jesus. You create substance. And Lord, if we're faithful in what you've given us, Lord, you are faithful in what you pour into us, Lord Jesus. And often it is almost overwhelming to see the blessings that come our way. Lord, I'm in awe of what you've done in my own family, in my own life. Lord, we're rich beyond measure because you have blessed our life. You have blessed our relationships. You have blessed our families, Lord. Richness is not always in dollars, Lord, although you provide the dollars, but God, you provide the love and the grace and the peace and the mercy of Jesus Christ to each of us. Thank you, Lord, for the offering that we're about to receive. Lord, we bless you. We thank you. We praise you. And now we pray as Jesus taught us to pray in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Brother Bobby, would you grab our offering plate, Tony? You can go ahead and hit Dr. Praise God from you all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Bobby. While you're remaining standing, please join me in the Apostles' Creed as we declare our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated in God's house today. We have a very special, special, if you will, that I want to sing for you. If you look in your bulletin, the words are there. I put it in there. I wanted you to let your eyes rest upon it. But join us in singing this song. It's exceedingly simple, but the words are profound as we worship Jesus, our Savior, together. We exalt thee, Jesus our Savior. Join us, please. We exalt thee, Jesus our Savior.
we'll see that again towards the end. We got another song we're going to sing too. I'm going to go ahead and preach a sermon. We're a little bit behind the time that I normally try to uh, honor, but I'm going to preach pretty short today, unless God just gives me something. I might be an hour and a half. Who knows? But uh, <laughs> I don't think so. I don't want to do that to you. Plus, I want to have a little bit of time after church for us to talk about the future and talk about what God is doing in our midst. So, we're not going to be in Luke today. I hated to leave Luke, but I have a Thanksgiving sermon I would like to preach to you today. I want us to have our thoughts on thanks. This will be our last time to get together before the actual day. How many love Thanksgiving? Amen. I do. I get completely jazzed about it every year. Ever since I was a little kid, I've loved Thanksgiving like I love Christmas because it is a day when we focus our thoughts on God, on everything He's given to us. He's been so good. He has been so good that sometimes it's hard during our work day and all the frustrations that we see watching what's going on in the world today to just stop and think, God, you're good. You're good. This world is beautiful. God is gracious. God is glorious. He's provided for all of our needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. And I told you all I try every morning. God put it on my heart every morning as I leave on the bus. Sometimes I'm, I'm mad when I leave the house. Sometimes I'm aggravated. I don't feel like doing this. Y'all know what I'm saying. You're not always happy. The Bible says that God has joy for us. Joy doesn't always mean happiness, but God wants you to have both. And I've realized that a key to being happy is to be grateful, to be thankful, to stop just for a minute. Stop fussing. Stop griping. Stop being negative and stop and say, Jesus, you have been so, so good. Y'all say that with me just for a moment. Jesus, you have been so, so good. Oh, beyond all our expectations. Right. Beyond anything we could ever ask, think, or, or even imagine. God has been good, so good. We have been blessed. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 5. You may want to turn there with me. And I'll probably read from Isaiah 12 too. Also, but I want to start in 1 Thessalonians 5 as our primary scripture. Paul is giving some bulleted points as he signs off to the Thessalonians. They were a church that he loved, a church that he had established. He had had to leave because the Roman authorities were there in Greece attempting to arrest him. And he was always in trouble for preaching the gospel. And he had said, it's better for me to leave and, and just write to you because right now they're after me. But he had left and the Holy Spirit had placed it on his heart to send back a letter. We've been talking about it in Bible study. He talked about the coming of the Lord, various revelation that God had given him. But at the end, he said, I'm going to give you some practical advice. I'm going to tell you how it's good to live your life. And I've learned it, Paul. Well, Paul had been through more trouble than we could ever imagine. Paul had been shipwrecked three times. He had been beaten within an inch of his life. He was the enemy of the state. He was despised by the government everywhere that he went, all because he wouldn't quit preaching, because he wouldn't quit proclaiming the word of the Lord. He was a disciple who, he said, I was born out of time. He said, I didn't walk with Jesus, but he came to me on that Damascus road. Listen to what he says. Simple things that we can do in our lives to understand the will of God concerning us and our families. Number one, rejoice always. Rejoice always. Just what I just said. I think I gave myself away already. We ain't always going to be happy. The Declaration of Independence of the United States of America is one of the most beautiful documents. I believe it was inspired by God. It's not Scripture, but I believe it was inspired by men to write as they established a Christian nation. It said that we have a right to the pursuit of happiness. Everyone is free to pursue happiness in their own way. They don't guarantee you happiness. All of us aren't going to be happy at all times in all things. But dear friends, I want you to understand there's a difference between happiness and joy. We get to choose joy in our lives. We get the choice to rejoice. Paul says rejoice always. He didn't say rejoice when things are going good on Thanksgiving Day when you're eating plenty. He said rejoice when you ain't got nothing in the refrigerator. He said rejoice when work is, is going so bad or when you are having to look for another job or when your family is, seems to just be going crazy. He said you need to rejoice because your sins are forgiven, because Jesus is Lord, because Jesus has rescued you, because Jesus loves you. Oh, he's been so good. It's reason to rejoice. Begin every day with Thanksgiving. These are in your bulletin. It is a choice. Make your choice to rejoice. On top of that, Pray continually. He didn't say pray when you go to prayer meeting. Don't pray when Pastor Mark prays. Don't just pray when you feel that you have problems in your life and you've got to pray. Don't just pray when something's going wrong. Pray continually. 
I've told you this over and over. It's like a, a cornerstone of my preaching because I've learned the power of it in my own life that prayer is an ongoing conversation all day long with Jesus. And it's that simple. You don't have to be formal about it. You don't have to kneel. I love this altar. And I wish more people would come up here and kneel down, even though some of us have trouble kneeling. We can kneel on this pad right here. What a wonderful way to pray in God's house. What a wonderful way to pray when we anoint someone with oil like we did Miss Willine today. We anoint with oil and we ask Jesus and the Holy Spirit to touch someone. But you know what? When you're driving down the road in the worst traffic jam in Athens right around Christmas time, trying to get into Trader Joe's or get into Kohl's or some of those places where we're all going to be going during Christmas time, and you just want to scream, pray, Jesus, oh Jesus, calm my spirit, Lord. I have to ask you that sometimes. You ever ask Jesus, help me calm down a little bit? Lord, not a little bit. I need to calm down a lot sometimes. Calm me, Lord. Give me peace. Give me joy. Oh, Lord Jesus, I love you, Jesus. Well, that's a powerful prayer right there. You don't have to speak the Lord's Prayer, although you can. That's a great prayer to pray. Just say, I love you, Lord. Lord, help me to be patient. These people are just trying to get to somewhere like I'm getting to. Everybody's frustrated at this time of year. Don't let me do something silly. I holler at somebody or, or, or worse. Uh, let me, don't let me pull out in front of somebody with my frustration. Keep it safe. I'm just talking about practical stuff, folks. Practical stuff where Jesus will take care of us. Jesus will guide us. Ongoing conversation, listening as much as you talk. We talk about that a lot too, but I don't hear it enough. I need to hear it more because I need to listen. Sometimes I, I, I wake up almost in the middle of a daze and I realize I ain't been listening to God all day long. I've been doing my own thing. I've been walking my own way. I've been frustrated and angry at people and I've acted ugly and I haven't been listening. Oh God, forgive me. There's another prayer. When you mess up, don't say, boy, when I get to church, I can ask God to forgive me. I can sure take care of business when I talk to Pastor Mark, let him pray for me, or, or talk to my friend, let her pray for me. But do it right now. Do it right then. Jesus, forgive me, Lord. I was wrong. Oh, Jesus, forgive me. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, in good times and in bad. Every time, every day, the worst day of your life, the hardest time of your life, that darkest night of your soul, and everyone's thinking about something different. When I talk about that, I don't want you to tell me because it may be just too personal. But it's good to think about. It's good to think about that worst time, that worst, hardest thing that split your heart in two. That time when you, you heard something that just, you didn't think you were going to be able to come back from it. Y'all got something? I, I'm sitting here thinking of things. I'm thinking of times, but Jesus brought me back. Jesus was my stay. He was my portion. And Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, touched my life. And I knew that I could make it. I knew that I would make it and that He had this and that He would take care of it. And I began to thank Him. Begin yeah. to thank Him in all circumstances, good and bad, when things are rough and when things are smooth. Thank the Lord. Oh, I thank you, Jesus, for State of Methodist Church, Lord. I thank you for every soul here, every family represented, for everyone on the internet watching us today. Oh, we give thanks. Thank you for our families. Thank you for the blessings. Thank you for the love that you have placed in our life. I thank you for even the tough times. Oh, I thank you for the tough times. God doesn't create misery in our lives. We talked about that in Job. Some people got that crazy wrong. Some people think God just up there just enjoying putting stuff on us. Look how much he can stand. How much can she stand? Let me put a little bit more on her. That's not how God works. He's a father. God is our heavenly father. I'm so far off this sermon, I probably can't even get back on, but I did have something written about that. Let me just do that. I'm going to finish up here in a minute because we've got a couple more songs I want to share with you. This is going to be a short sermon. How many of you love to give good gifts to your children? Y'all get excited about Christmas time. It don't matter if they're 30, 35, 40. You still like to go shopping for them, don't you? Y'all shaking your heads. Are your grandchildren, are your stepchildren, are your, your, your adopted children? Some of y'all got adopted children. Maybe not natural children, but a lot of you have uh, adopted children who you love and who you've been participating in their, their rearing and their growing up. And it's so fun to go shopping. Angie's already, every day we get like four or five packages from Amazon. I come home and I have to tote a bunch of stuff. And you got more? Well, that's for Charlotte. That's for Braxton. That's for others. Blah, blah. And I'm like, this is getting good. This is getting good. It's fun to give kids gifts. But you know what? When a kid expects something, that's a whole different thing, isn't it? A whole different thing. You give a kid an allowance. 
They get used to having it. What if you gave your kid $50 a week? I've heard of people doing that. Now that's crazy. I got like 50 cents a week when I was a kid. And then I had to cut the grass for that. You know, <laughs> that kind of thing. But I, these folks today, these prosperous days, people give their kids money hand over fist. And when that money doesn't show up, that kid, where's my money? Where's my money? It's an entitlement. Big difference, folks. Big difference between a gift and an entitlement. We love to give our children good gifts. I remember a few years ago, a number of years ago, when she was still a teenager, and I even forgot the circumstances of it, but I had a note in an older sermon that I was referencing where I gave Stacia $50 for something. She didn't ask me. I just knew that she wanted something or needed something. She was probably about 17, 18 years old. She may have been in college at the time, and I knew she didn't have any money. She never asked me. And I left it laying on a little uh, uh, layer where she would eat breakfast. And I put a little note on there. This is for you, honey. And I remember she was just absolutely blown away by that. She came to me and she said, thank you, Dad. And she wrote me a little note. I wish I still had it. I think I've got it somewhere. The sweetest note that I sat and bawled when I read that note. Because it, and it, you know what? It made me want to do more. I mean, now I don't want to go out and start giving her $50 every day because I don't want it to be an entitlement. But boy, it's fun to give your kid good gifts. Now, who do you think taught us that? Where do you think that comes from? God our Father. God our Father loves us so much and He gives good gifts to His children. Let me read you something from Matthew chapter 7. This is good. This is also in Luke, but I'll save Luke for when we preach Luke. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For everyone that asks receives. The one that seeks finds. And the one who knocks, the door will be opened. And then He says this. Which one of you if your son or your daughter asks for bread, will give them a stone? Or if they ask for a fish, will you give them a snake? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts? Good gifts to those who ask Him. That's what your Heavenly Father is about. That's what He wants for you. This is the will of God concerning you. Paul says, give thanks in all circumstances. Oh, dear friends, in all circumstances, I want God's will. I want what He has for me and for my family. I know that He's good. I know that He has only good things for me. But when trouble does come, when the enemy attacks, I'm going to thank Him even then and more so for the, not, not for the bad stuff because He's not responsible for that, but I'm going to thank Him for His loving care in the middle of the storm. Amen? Amen. I believe that's all I have for you today. Are y'all hearing me? Y'all hear me about Thanksgiving? Somebody tell me what you're thankful for. We begin to sing. Yes, Ninos. Go for it. Tell us, dear friend. I love the Lord to thank. And um, today I was thinking, you know, we have to give thanks for the family that we have. Yes. For the friends that we have. Because in the hard times, that's where they stand with us. Yes. They help us to go through. And more important. For the faith that we have in our heart that everything is going to be done good and for your good because you are with God yes. and for God. Oh, yeah. Dear sister. Dear sister. Dear sister. Anybody else want to give it a go? What's God saying? What's the Lord speaking? What do you think? You want to tell us what you're thankful for, Miss Willie? I thought I'd be dead long ago. I went <laughs> paid for my funeral. You're the miracle woman. He's been so good to me. Yes. So good to me. Amen. You should have saved that money you paid for your funeral. <laughs> you ain't going to need it for a while. <laughs> you are precious. You man. have to put it in the bank to get interest. We love you. We love you. <laughs> Look in your bulletin. There's another song. Everybody knows this one, but...